Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today, very excitingly, we're gonna be chatting about my most anticipated releases of 2020 of the first half of the year. <laughs> when I was compiling my list, I very soon realized, shit. <laughs> Worried? Me? Never. I have a lot of books I'm excited for. On my list in total at the moment, there's 48 new releases. 48, 48. You gotta do me a favor. Anything. You can't say a word. And so I asked on Twitter, and the majority voted for let's do the first half of the year now, and then later on we'll do the second half of the year, because the further in the year something is, the more susceptible it is to change. So I still do have 35 <laughs> on my list from January to June. Am I gonna read all of these books when they come out, or this year even? No. But if you watched my goals video, you know that one of my goals is to read a lot more new releases this year, and so we're just gonna try our best. Let's just get into it, because I'm really excited to talk about these. There's a lot of great books coming out this year, and hopefully you'll find some that you're excited about too. First, I think this will be coming out on the day this video comes out, actually. We've got The Burning Girls by CJ Chu. CJ Tudor wrote The Chalk Man, which is like a pretty popular thriller, I would say, like on booktube and stuff. This is about a vicar moving to this small village in the English countryside, which has a really dark secret. There's been a lot of death throughout history, and it seems that it's haunting the village a bit. There's a lot of secrecy. Maybe ghosts? Maybe ghosts? We're not sure. There's like a hint of ghosts. I would like to see it. I love religious villages for some reason now, like villages where there's, there's like toxic religion, like secrecy, backstabbing, like for some reason that's the current vibe. So very excited for this one. Next is If I Disappear by Eliza Jane Brazier. Brazier? Listen, okay, we need to ex accept right now, I'm very bad with pronunciations, even of things that like the English language, not names, like just words. I'm very bad. So apologies if I pronounce any of these wrong. This is another thriller. And there's a lot of thrillers on this list that are like debut or that I've heard just a few good things about because I think like mysteries and thrillers are a bit more difficult to find like before they get released. Firstly, can I just say, can I just say the US cover? Perfection. The UK cover? Not a fan. Not a fan. There's nothing wrong with my views or beliefs because I have freedom of speech and everything I'm saying is true. This is about a girl who's obsessed with this podcast. Her favorite podcast host goes missing. So she ends up in the podcast host's hometown, which like is a bit weird, and is trying to figure out what has happened and finds out that other girls seem to have gone missing in this hometown. I think there may be a bit of like obsession going on here, but we've got that like true crime podcast element as well, which reminds me of things like Sadie and I know The Night Swim, I haven't read it, but that has a podcast, true crime podcast element to it as well. So this sounds like if you enjoyed those, a great one that's coming out soon. Then we get into February. Now February is a nightmare. <laughs> God give me fucking strength. Because I've got 10 releases on this list. 10 releases. 10. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. It's the shortest month. How is that even possible? First is one of my most anticipated releases of this year. I just spoke about Sadie by Courtney Summers. Now we've got The Project by Courtney Summers. And let me just say, cults. Yeah! It's about this girl whose sister joined this cult and like the gal has never trusted it. And then she gets an opportunity to kind of like investigate the cult and its leader. And it's very mysterious, suspenseful, family plays a big role in this. And I'm, I'm scared, but like, I love cults. I just want to read about cults all the time. Something about them draws me in. Like it could be like a new niche for me, I feel like. So I'm so excited for this. I loved Sadie by Courtney Summers and I'm just so excited. I love the cover. Like this is one of my most anticipated releases. Next is What Big Teeth by Rose Zabo. This is pitched as Miss Peregrine's Home meets the Adams Family, which is very exciting. It seems a bit unhinged, which I enjoy. Like in the description, it speaks about this girl not having seen her family for for years they sent her to a boarding house and she says only knows them as vague memories her grandfather's tremendous fanged snout the barrel full of water her mother always soaked in and strange hunting trips in the dark wood with her sisters and cousins 
it's very strange. Um, <laughs> and I think she reunites with her family, but it doesn't go as she planned. And she like recruits her other grandmother and it all like chaos and it's weird and it's like crazy. I don't know. The cover for this is a bit crazy as well. And I'm just hoping for a bit of like unhinged surrealism craziness. I feel like that's what we're going to get from that. Next, I think this is the only middle grade on this list. I don't tend to read a ton of middle grade, but this is Me and My Dad and the End of the Rainbow by Benjamin Dean. This comes out on the 4th of February, and this is basically about a boy whose parents have recently split up. He's like really struggling with that, and then he sees this rainbow pamphlet for, I think it's an LGBT march, fall out of his dad's pocket. The plot is that his dad has come out as gay, I think. The boy and his friends traveling, I think, to this march and discovering the LGBT movement and getting closer to his dad through that. Gavin spoke about this recently and it just sounds so pure and wonderful and amazing and like heartwarming, but also tackling difficult topics. So I'm so excited for this one. If you like middle grade, I think this is definitely one to keep your eye on. Then another one, another one i'm gonna be reading this as soon as it comes out <gasps> so excited <laughs> Another one of my most anticipated releases is Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson, also coming out on the 4th of Feb. We've got a lot of like early Feb releases. So I love Renee Watson. I, I love Renee Watson. I want to make my way through her backlist. I've read Watch Us Rise, which she co-write, and I've read Piecing Me Together. But this sounds so amazing. And I love the cover. Like just the design of the cover is what I want to see. This is about a plus size girl who basically falls in love with this guy. She starts falling in love with him, but he's like an activist. He's an activist. And so she lies to him <laughs> like about being interested in activism. And listen, we can all relate. I lied a lot to Tom when we were first talking. Like I said, I liked songs I had never heard just to get his good books. It happens. We all do it. And then look where we are now. Four years later, it worked. Anyway. Plan succeeded. <laughs> It's about self-love being revolutionary and falling in love and like the difficulty of keeping up with those lies and activism. I really like when Renee Watson writes about social issues. So I'm just so excited. Next is Across the Green Grass Fields by Shauna Maguire. So this is the sixth in the Wayward Children series. I still need to read the fifth, but it is very short. So hopefully I will get around to this ASAP. Wayward Children series, I'm sure you've heard people talk about it, but it's this portal fantasy, very similar to Narnia, where these kids find these magical worlds that are perfect for them. Often there's some you need to read before others, but it's not like a chronological series. Like we follow different characters in all the different books. And I believe this is a new one that you can start with. So you can read this one without any prior knowledge of the other books. A magical world of centaurs, magical equ equines, equ equine, equ equines. Dum dum. I don't need to know like the plot for these. It's not required. I don't need to know the plot. All I need to know is the next book in the Wayward Children series. Shauna Maguire is one of my favorite authors. I'm really excited for this. I need to read that one. <laughs> but after that, we'll get into this one. Oh, okay, really, really excited for this one. This has been on my anticipated for so long. The next one is Fat Chance Charlie Vega by Crystal Maldonado. I love the cover. The author recently posted on Twitter like the stack of finished books and the, like the spine and everything. Oh my God. <gasps> Oh my god! You look stunning, darling. So stunning. Absolutely stunning. Stunning. Absolutely stunning earrings. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Okay, so this is just like a fun but serious, which is like my favourite combination for YA contemporaries. YA contemporary where we follow Charlie Vega and what it's like growing up fat. Like her parents, her mum always tries to like give her weight loss shakes. But her best friend has always been the person that's in her corner. And then this boy like asks her out for the first time. She's like, oh my God, yes. But then she finds out that he asks her best friend out first. She's like, am I just the second choice? I'm, I'm the main character. I am not the second choice. <laughs> As someone who has struggled with their weight a lot, especially when like growing up in like childhood and early teenage years, reading books about being fat in a YA setting is something that I really enjoy. And I think plus size characters and literature are so important to read about. So I'm really excited for this one. I, like I said, it's been on my want to read for so, so long. Next, just quickly, is Where Hope Comes From by Nikita Gill. Nikita Gill is a poet. This poetry focuses on loneliness and mental health, which I think 
I can relate to and many of us can also relate to too. Next is The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. This comes out on the 18th of February. I'm so excited. I own an ARC. I cannot wait to get around to this. So this is like set in a luxury hotel, which has been converted from an old sanatorium, which is basically like a mental hospital, I believe, like an old mental hospital, which no thank you. Why would you do that? It's getting weird set in like the Alps, I think. Our main character is a detective on there on holiday with her brother and then his brother's fiance goes missing and another woman goes missing and it's just like this mystery of uncovering what is happening. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. I feel so lucky to have gotten an arc for this and I cannot wait. I feel like it's gonna be fire. Like I'm, I cannot wait. Like I'm, can you see? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. The next is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. This comes out on the 23rd of Feb. This was like, sometimes pictures of romance, but I think it's more of like a finding oneself story. It's a story of a character who goes to Vegas, gets drunk and marries someone. Her and her wife, like I think go and try and get to know each other. The character just uncovers a lot about themselves and their past, like what they've buried. So I've heard a lot of good early reviews about this one. And I think I think it's just going to be very hard hitting whilst also having this romance element to it. And the last of our February releases is Quiet in Her Bones by Nalini Singh. This comes out on the 25th of February. So this is another thriller where this character's mother vanished 10 years ago along with a lot of money and they always assume that she ran away with the money and then her body is found 10 years later on the grounds of the housing estate, like this rich housing estate they live on. So it's clear that the money was a cover up and this whole thing was a cover up. Again, this is like another thriller I haven't heard a lot about. The description just intrigued me. It just sounds like a very interesting mystery set in this elite neighborhood. And yeah, I'm super excited for it. Okay, then on to March, we've got five releases coming out that I'm really excited for. So first is The Conductors by Nicole Glover. So this is a debut historical fantasy. So our main character used to be a conductor on the Underground Railroad. And now she solves mysteries with her husband that like the white authorities won't touch. But then one of their friends is murdered and so that's what spurs the story on. I don't really know how this is fantastical. I'm very intrigued to find that out. I love books that merge fantasy and new speculative fiction to explore like historical and social issues. So very excited for this. I feel like that's exactly up my street. Like my favorite amalgamation of genres is fantasy, historical and mystery all in one. And that's exactly what this is. You're that bitch. You're gonna do amazing today. You're fucking beautiful. Next is A History of What Comes Next by Sylvain Nouvelle. This comes out on the 4th of March. This is another one I'm so excited for. I'm currently obsessed with The Themis Files by Sylvain Nouvelle. I've only read the first one, but this is like a crazy historical with these people trying to stop the Nazis and like different forces working together to adjust and change time. It sounds very crazy. If you read The Test by Sylvain Nouvelle, you'll know that his stuff can be like super mind bending and confusing and like just disjointed. So I'm so excited for this one. Like, I think this could be so, so good. I like, when I read the test, I just wanted it to be longer and this feels like a longer version of the test. So super excited for this. Next is The Mirror Season by Anna Marie McLemore. This comes out on the 16th of March. I still haven't read any Anna Marie McLemore. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Wild Beauty, I think, is the one I want to start with. And this has been like on every I have to read this list for forever, but I just struggle to fit it into my themed reading vlogs. The Mirror Season is magical realism that follows two teens who were sexually assaulted at the same party by the same person. And one of them starts to lose their magic because of it. One can't actually remember the events at all. I'm so intrigued by Anna Marie McMore's writing that I can't wait. Next is Every Vow You Break by Peter Swanson. This comes out on the 18th of March. So this is another thriller and it's about this girl who's marrying this like millionaire, billionaire, rich guy. And she has a one night stand a couple nights before the wedding. And she's like, listen, it's behind me. I'm gonna go get married, everything's gonna be fine. And then they go on their honeymoon to this like deserted island and the guy turns up. <laughs> and I, oh. 
I think they get like isolated on this island and stuck with each other. I'm just really intrigued. Like as you know, I love the guest list where all these characters are stuck on this island and murder starts occurring. So this very much reminds me of that. Last very quickly is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. Now I haven't read Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom or King of Scars. I haven't read any of them. Um, I'm gonna be reading the first two at the start of March. So maybe I'll read King of Scars that month as well, although I very much doubt it. But I love the cover so much. And I can't even read the description. I know we're following Nikolai, Zoya and Nina in this series who are characters from the Grishaverse, but I can't even look at the description of this book because I don't want to spoil King of Scars for myself. So just admire the cover. It's fashion meets, it's fashion, it's, excuse me, it's fashion. <laughs> it's fashion. Is it, fa wait, what is it, fashion? It's one of my favorite covers and everyone hates it. Like everyone hates it and I don't understand why. Like I, something about it just appeals to the core of me, like the colors, oh my God, I love it. Next is April and there's only actually three releases on my list for April. Again, a bit more of a quiet month. We get crazier in a second. First is Pride and Premeditation by Tirza Price. This comes out on the 6th of April. So this, bear with me. This is a Jane Austen murder mystery retelling. So this is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice but it's like a murder mystery and Lizzie Bennet is trying to solve a murder. Tell me you're not gagged. Pretty legendary if you ask me. I love it. Like tell me that doesn't excite you. Tell me that doesn't just appeal to the core of you. I am so excited for this. You listen, that's, uh, that's all I need to know. That's all I need to know going into it. I'm sold. Next is Malice by Heather Walter. This comes out on the 13th of April. And this is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. I believe the princess and the villain fall in love. So she falls for like the sorceress. I love fairy tale retellings. Like I'm a bit, that's like a bit of a weakness for me. I'm just so intrigued. Like I love villain stories and the idea of Sleeping Beauty, Aurora falling in love with the villain. And it's sapphic as well. Oh my God. Oh, I'm super excited for Witches Are Steeped in Gold coming out on the 20th of April. So this is just like this Jamaican inspired fantasy with witches. That's all I really know. Like I don't really know the plot. I think we've got like sisters in this, but all I need to know is witches. I love witches at the moment. I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. We have nine in May. So May's, May's another heavy month. And the thing is, May is gonna be busy for me with uni. Like I've got a lot of, like that's gonna be crunch time for uni. Um... <laughs> I'm not gonna get to read many of these at that time. First is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This comes out on the 4th of May. So this is by the author of The Martian, which is basically all that I needed to sell it to me. I really loved The Martian when I read it like six years ago. I love the film. I feel like I need to reread the book, but like when, when you've read the book and then watched the film multiple times, like do you need to? Like that's the thing that's holding me back. So this is again like very, a story about someone who's isolated. Our main character is a sole survivor of this mission, but they don't really remember what their mission is. They've got memory loss, but they can see like their crewmates corpses behind them. And so it's just again that like stuck in space, isolated in space trope that is very prevalent in The Martian but done again. Next is The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He coming out the 4th of May. I'm not gonna lie, part of the reason that this is on this list is the cover. This is one of my favorite covers. Like it's stunning. So we've got this girl who's abandoned on this island and then I think it's her sister who's in like this eco planet city thing. Don't really understand it. <laughs> mm, I know a lot of things but I don't know about that. I'm not sure why. I'm intrigued you're the same. I'm intrigued you're the same. I feel like this is one that's gonna be very popular this year. Then we have She's Too Pretty to Burn by Wendy Hurd. So this, oh my God, this is inspired by the picture of Dorian Gray. Can I just say, it's about time. Now I didn't actually like the picture of Dorian Gray, but I like the premise. So in this, we have a Dorian Gray character who makes people fall in love with her. And then at the end of the summer, there is one fire, two murders, three drowning bodies, one suspect, one stalker. I just feel like this could be like a YA mystery that is also hardcore. And I want someone to do the picture of Dorian Gray idea 
in a way that I enjoy. <laughs> so hopefully that will be that. Oh, okay. What I'm super excited for next is Sorrowland by River Solomon coming out 6th of May. Oh my God. I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited for this. So this is a bit difficult to explain. This woman leaves this super religious compound and gives birth to twins in the woods and becomes hunted by the community in the woods. But then her body starts changing and it's like kind of like a metamorphosis situation that we've got here. It sounds crazy. I'm super intrigued. Another one I'm very excited by is Switch by A.S. King. A.S. King is one of my favorite, 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 favorite authors. She's incredible. She's a beautiful person. Her talent and brilliance is beyond. She surprises me all the time. And this sounds absolutely crazy. It's in a place where time has stopped and people use this like website clock to mark time. There's like a switch in this girl's house and her dad keeps building boxes around the switch to prevent people from getting it. And she lives in the seventh box. <laughs> It sounds crazy. A.S. King does craziness so well. Very excited. Next. See, May, I told you. May, the thing is with May, I have so many books I'm so excited for. Another one, one of my most anticipated, reading it the day it comes out, is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. So in this we follow Nick and Charlie as they fall in love. My favourite graphic novel series in the history of the world. I love it so much. And this is about them. Like, I think they're kind of like getting ready to say I love you, which is a... Uh, it's so amazing and I would play it again and again and again and again. But they're also having to deal with Charlie has developed an eating disorder and so it's them trying to deal with that together. Heartstopper just like kills me. It kills me every time. So I'm very excited for that to come out. Then we have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid coming out on the 27th of May. This is going to be another one that is like so hyped. People are so excited for it. It's the story of four siblings. I think they're the children of one of the husbands from Evelyn Hugo, I think. Because all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's newer books are all linked. So like there is characters from Evelyn Hugo in Daisy Jones. So this is just like further playing up on that. And it's at this party that goes completely out of control with these siblings. The next is The Baby Is Mine by Oyin Can Braithwaite, also coming out on the 27th of May. This is the author of My Sister the Serial Killer. And it's set during the pandemic, which like, how? <laughs> Our main character's girlfriend kicks him out and he goes to his uncle's house. And when he arrives there, he sees his aunt, but also with another woman there. And they both claim that the baby in the crib is theirs. That's suspicious. That's weird. One that I have not heard a lot of people talk about, but I'm very excited for is The Dinner Guest by BP Walter. Four people walked into the dining room that night. One would never leave. Matthew, the perfect husband. Titus, the perfect son. Charlie, the perfect illusion. Rachel, the perfect stranger. Charlie didn't want her at the book club. Matthew wouldn't listen. And that's how Charlie finds himself slumped behind, beside his husband's body. Their son sitting silently at the dinner table where Rachel calls 999, the bloody knife still gripped in her hand. Too much drama for me. <sighs> And it says it's for fans of Agatha Christie and Donna Tart. Oh my God. I'm so excited for this. It sounds crazy. It sounds intriguing. I love like rich people secrets. Like I hate rich people, but I love reading about them getting murdered. Like rich London people. Oh my God. Nothing brings me more joy than reading about them getting murdered. <laughs> Yeah, this isn't one that's been super hyped up, but I think I'm gonna love it. And then finally we have June where we have six releases that I am very much anticipating. The first is The Tea Dragon Tapestry by Katie O'Neill coming out the 1st of June. So this is the sequel to The Tea Dragon Society. Basically tea dragons are like these little animals that like, this is a graphic novel series by the way, that grow tea leaves and it's all about brewing them. It's like one of the most gorgeous, wholesome, sweet graphic novels I've ever read. And this is the last one and I don't want it to be the last one. <laughs> oh my God, it's so beautiful. I cannot wait for this to come out. One of the most beautiful books like ever. I'm so obsessed. Then we have The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nevo coming out the 1st of June. I think this is also one of my favorite covers. I love this cover so much. Nevo, I love Nevo's writing so, so much, but this is her first full length novel. So this has been dubbed a great Gatsby retelling, but I don't know to what extent that's actually true. It's set in the 1920s and it's about this like
like queer Asian adopted character discovering their magic and who they are and their powers. I am just so excited for anything that Nevo writes. Then we have One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. I know Red, White and Royal Blue was one of my worst books last year. Why bring it up now? Huh? Why bring it up now? But I have hope. I have so much hope that I can love Casey McQuiston's writing and this has like a magical hint to it. So basically we have this girl who's traveling on the train every day in New York and there's this other girl that she's like really crushing on but then she finds out that that girl is from the 1970s and is like somehow bending time. So that element, like I feel like that's something I would really enjoy and really love. So I have a lot of hope for this. And if I don't like it, then we're done. But like, I have a lot of hope. Then we have another one of my most anticipated releases is Darling by Kay Ancrum coming out the 22nd of June. This is a Peter Pan retelling. Kay Ancrum's writing paired with a Peter Pan retelling. My mind like can't wrap around it. I am so excited for this. Kay Ancrum's writing is so disjointed and like surreal and completely bonkers to read. So I am just so excited. I'm so excited. That's one of my most anticipated releases. Then we have Blackout, which is actually an anthology, a collaboration between authors. It's by Danielle Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, Nick Stone, Angie Thomas, Ashley Woodfolk, and Nicola Yoon. So this is set in New York when there is a power cut. And it's the story of six different couples in this power cut. Six different stories kind of like coming together and going on these different paths. And I'm so excited. That's so many brilliant, brilliant authors. And then my last anticipated release, <laughs> Oh my god, we're there! Of 2021, of the first half, is Survive the Night by Riley Sagar, coming out the 29th of June. This is set in the 1990s, and our main character is in the car with the person who she thinks is like the current serial killer that everyone's afraid of. And it's the story of being stuck in this car with this person and just trying to survive the night. I'm really intrigued to see how this works. Like, how is Roddy Sager gonna pull that off? Like, you're literally in the car, I think, for the whole book. It reminds me a lot of No Exit, where you're like in that um, stopping station for the whole book. But this time you're in a car. So I'm really intrigued to see how the story is gonna work in terms of suspense and pace. It just sounds so scary to me, but I'm so, so excited. So there we have it. Oh my God, I'm about to lose my voice. That is all my most anticipated releases for the first half of 2021. Let me know if you're interested in any of these and also let me know which ones you want me to prioritize because I'm kind of letting myself buy maybe like two or three a month. Let me know which of these you're most interested in and they're definitely the ones that I will prioritize. If you've gotten to the end, comment one of the star emojis for good luck. Hopefully we'll love all these books. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.